My name is Phil Guyman. I was a pro cyclist for 10 years, but at the end of 2016, I realized that I had to quit racing and get a job. I couldn't be the best at pro cycling, so I've decided to be the absolute worst at retiring. Day three was a day of presentations. Uh, it started with an outdoor presentation. I mean, the stage is outnumbering the audience right now, you realize that. This is like a ska concert. I really love these big, cuddly, stuffed mascots here. Speaking of cuddles, Cadell Evans was there. And then some other guys arrived. I guess they also make YouTube stuff, GCN, I don't know. Real amateur though. I, I don't think they even know about stuff like B-roll, you know? Look at Finally, at the presentation outside, Nibali showed up to much fanfare. He had four teammates, uh, he had staff. I don't know how he got there. He didn't have to do any of the media stuff. I don't know where he was staying. I think he might have come in a fighter jet. Oh, oh, he saw me, he saw me. Shit. Does Vincenzo Nibali know who I am? This would be my biggest one-on-one -on -one rivalry with a big name. Unless, like, Fabian Cancellara was going to challenge me to a race or something. I was nervous on the ride back to the hotel. Nibley looks like shit. Yeah, I mean, he looks like shit, right? Absolute dog shit. What do you think? I think I think you're totally right. I saw that selfie that you took with him. Yeah. And I, you could see you're getting in his head, and the, like he let you in his head, which he shouldn't have done, and he did. And you're in like, there now. Like, which one of us is McGregor, and which one is Mayweather? I don't really follow. I He's Mayweather. Boxing, He's boxing so Mayweather. Reference. Well, yes and no. Or kickboxing. Listen, the point is, is the point is like he knows he's in you trouble. Took a, you took a selfie with him, and you basically marked him. Like, yeah, you, you like did a territory thing on him. Like, you yeah, 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 exactly, you exactly. <laughs> that night we had the packet pickup at a hotel. The hotel had some cool stuff. So that's weird. But it was missing some other things. Oh yeah, that's the spot right here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We got. Fruit, fruit. Oh no. Come on. Lee, where do I sit? Which table? Uh, right here would be fine, Phil. You're damn right. It was surreal when they called me onto the stage presenting the pro males, and it was me and Cadell Evans and Vincenzo Nibali side by side, as if we're equals. Um, I have not won one Grand Tour, if you can believe that. I've not even won one. Um, and those guys, I don't even know how many between them. So on the one hand, I don't know how I get myself into these situations. But I also wouldn't be entirely shocked if I won this thing. So there's nothing to do but just laugh about it. Finally, it was race day. Nibley had a team. They rode the front at the beginning. They just went straight to the front. They drilled it. There was an early breakaway. Uh, that they let go. I followed one move. I followed an early breakaway right at the beginning, and one of the, one of Nibali's teammates just shut it down. He just sat on the back. He didn't pull through, and I was like, "All right, Vincenzo knows who I am. It's on. This is it." It was more tactical than I thought. Nibali was doing once he ran out of teammates. Nibali was doing these surges. He would he would go to the front and accelerate and see who he could pop, and then see who would attack. See who was still there. He was obviously, he was by far the fittest person in the race and the fittest person I've ever gone head to head with. Around, somewhere around 9,000 feet, I saw my chance. He'd pulled, he'd been pulling for like two hours, he'd been on the front, and it slowed down and, and I went for it. I went solo, I got a giant gap right away. And, and I'm like, I'm, I'm like, I'm going my speed, I'm in, I'm within my realm, um, I've, I've got this, and everything, everything just flowed. Everything was perfect. I was, I was just, I was feeling it. I've been eating. I was on my nutrition. Nibali was wasted back there. He'd been going too hard. He'd been safe. He hadn't saved enough energy, and uh, and now this is my race. This is my time for glory and a fat paycheck. And then reality set in. So I came in sixth, and like 20 minutes or more down on on Nibali. It was not, it was not close. Not close. It turns out. When you attack at 9,000 feet, uh, when you blow up, you blow up good. You blow up real good. He came by me like I was standing still, and, uh, and I just rode in as hard as I could, which was super slow. 
Um, and I came in sixth. Tell you it all. I got a medal though. <laughs> I love a finisher's medal. And then they got this like hot ginger tea, which is either good, <laughs> either it's delicious or I'm dying. It's actually delicious. <laughs> I got my certificate of finish. They give you some, some splits. Final time was three hours and 28 minutes. Podium, which obviously is six five, places. I missed Aston. it. They were calling my name. I had to run away. I see the cat. Where's the bear? There's the bear. The bear's on the podium. He came in seven. Wow. We got the drones. It was a long time waiting around at the top for enough people to finish to let us drive down. But in keeping with my mission of I never ride downhill, we drove the van downhill. It would have been much faster to ride down. Luckily, we had a snack stop. Cancer water. It's just the fun little things like this about Asia. Taiwan is one of the places where they really do scooters right. There's no rules. Of course, it wouldn't be a trip to Taipei without a visit to the night market which is just a symphony of sounds and smells and lights that will give you a seizure. What's that? It's a beer. Dude, there's some knockoff hats. This is vegetarian dog. Man. That's what you do. Do not miss. Is that what it looks like? Oh, definitely squid. Probably not vegetarian. Is that the actual fin? <laughs> yeah. They just like take the head off. Mostly there's an item called stinky tofu that really dominates the whole experience. <laughs> We're never going to see anybody. Next to the market was another beautiful temple where, for the last time of this trip, I got to be somewhere amazing and beautiful without really knowing if I was supposed to be there or what was going on. Finally, we headed back to the hotel in a taxi that was playing this ubiquitous American-sounding music that's like third grade level that plays everywhere in Asia. Taiwan is a fun place to explore. For a cyclist, Hualien and the KOM Challenge is definitely a great experience and a cool place to check out. It's a long trip, but it's worth it. Just make sure you pack enough cookies for the whole trip, and don't try to attack Vincenzo Nibli at 9,000 feet. <laughs> Goodbye from Taiwan. Thank you. Puppy. Sure. Hang on, I gotta get this dog.